All right, what's up everyone? So I wanted to do this video just to intro a new mini series that I'm gonna be doing on the channel, documenting my mini cut into my trip to California. Two weeks from today, I'm going to be traveling to Sacramento, California, and then to Los Angeles. First for the Muscle Mayhem, coaching one of my really good friends, Pat McKinnis, after that show. And also I won this show two years ago now, <laughs> which is crazy, and won my pro card. So I do have a couple of photo shoots planned, uh, one in Sacramento and one in LA. Uh, so that's basically what I'm cutting for. And over the course of the last couple of weeks, I've more or less just been kind of maintaining my weight and practicing a combination of sort of rough tracking and intuitive eating. Unfortunately, uh, I think three days ago, I did want to get back into doing some deadlifting because I did watch the IPF Worlds, which was insanely motivating for me. So I just started with 135 on a rack deadlift, did that for a set of like 10. Five minutes later, I could just feel the left side of my mid thoracic erectors just completely seizing up and it was just like a rock. And five minutes later I was on the floor and I literally could not move. Like I was just <laughs> flat on the floor uh, for about a half an hour and I had to get two guys and Robin and my mom actually to come and sort of like lift me out of the gym, uh, brought me to the hospital. And I was just given some uh, painkillers and basically told just to rest up until it was better. And now today it's finally starting to feel like I can you know, rotate and I can forward flex and I can flex laterally a little bit. So I am gonna go into the gym and just do some light stuff. Uh, so just to get you guys up to speed, we arrived in Kelowna about a week ago. We're absolutely loving it here. The scenery is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's kind of hard to believe that this is Canada. Last night we celebrated Canada Day. Uh, so we saw some fireworks and Robin and I went and sort of explored downtown Kelowna. Uh, one thing that we have noticed is that the city is actually, it's really small and I'm not totally sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like on the one hand, we do like the fact that it is kind of quaint and it's not super fast paced or anything, which is really nice. Um, on the other hand, there isn't quite as much here um, in terms of just like availability, like shopping and just I don't know, stuff to see, I guess. That's more than made up for by just how nice it is and how good the weather has been and everything. Um, so overall, our experience of, of living here so far has been really, really positive. So we're here for six months at least, and then from there, we haven't totally decided whether or not we'll be staying yet. I haven't officially decided what my macros are going to be for this cut. It's only two weeks, so I do want to be fairly aggressive. I woke up this morning at 162 pounds, I think it was. Or yesterday was Canada Day, uh, so I didn't track at all. I basically just used it as a free day. Definitely ate in a surplus, ate a lot of like high sodium foods and had some drinks. So that weigh-in is probably about two pounds over what I actually am. Over the course of the next couple of weeks, I would like to drop around probably five pounds. I'd like to get down to around 155. At that point, I'll probably refeed pretty heavily for a couple of days just to fill out for the photo shoots. So I'm thinking I'll start probably somewhere around 2200 to 2400 calories, see if I'm losing on that and then adjust accordingly. Keep in mind I am, you know, only 160 pounds, so those macros or calories might sound low, but it's always individual and I do live a fairly sedentary lifestyle. I don't have like an overly active job or anything like that. And so in order to get my energy expenditure up a bit, I am going to be implementing daily walks. So every morning I'll go for about like a half an hour walk. And that's something that I just enjoy doing anyway. I love getting outdoors and I love starting my day off with something active. So I'll finish out this vlog with some training footage and uh, give you guys a little glimpse of what I did today. All right, that's enough from me. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the vlog and I will see you in the next clip. So one of my old friends from the East Coast is visiting Kelowna just for a couple of days. So I'm just waiting for him to show up. Like, oh, there he is. I said I'm vlogging today. Oh, we're <laughs> What's up, man? Good to see you, man. Two? Yeah. You're looking extra uh, big, bro. <laughs> thanks, dude. I'm like, I went to a guy here, and he was like, really good, because Pat used to cut my hair, right? In Halifax. Oh, okay. Like, Pat, Pat. Oh, that's funny. And, uh, do this face? Yeah, I'm just kidding. That's like, okay. you're way more active on your Instagram now. You can see who he likes. You get lots of likes and pics. 
It's it's growing. Your Instagram is fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're into, like rise of stardom, like <laughs> like ten thousand. It was okay. crazy. Hey, like shit. I think it's five. Five. meal two I've got one full cup of cottage cheese one gala apple and a tablespoon of peanut butter this is something I used to do in my nationals prep back in 2012 just put peanut butter in with cottage cheese and it seems really random but it actually tastes really good just on its own guys we're gonna grab a pre-workout meal at booster juice just like a wrap or a quesadilla or something like that and I got some new pre-workout C4 and we picked up some whey protein as well. Yeah, or maybe this, this looks a little lighter. Yeah, that looks lighter. Yeah. All right, what's going on guys? So I'm gonna take you guys through my first workout back after my back injury. Um, so I started things off with this incline chest press machine. Uh, I was doing sets of 25 to 30 reps with really lightweight. You can even see it there on the sides. I'm like three plates down, um, where normally I'd be about three quarters of the way down. Um, so yeah, one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you have a back injury, like I do, is keeping your back supported. So there's more back support with a machine like this than say a free weight bench press. And also a way to induce similar fatigue to having more load um, on the machine is just by doing higher reps closer to failure but I wasn't taking these sets quite to failure um, at least not early on in the workout when I was still kind of testing the waters in terms of what I could do um, so the second movement was the sh machine shoulder press um, and you'll notice here that I'm not really walking out the movement and that's just another technique that I'm using to sort of induce the same sort of fatigue and metabolic stress that you might see from uh, more load with a lighter load. Um, and so just by keeping constant tension on the muscle, which isn't something I typically would do, um, I'm able to get that sort of metabolic effect since the tension effect is just simply going to be undermined at this point as a result of the injury. Um, so up next, it was the machine lateral raise. Uh, and again, here, you kind of have to think of ways to really make the movement effective um, while not being able to load it very heavily. And so you can see there at the beginning, I'm sort of internally rotating. That allows me to get a little bit better mind-muscle connection with the side delts. Um, and then also I finished this uh, exercise off with a drop set. Um, so I took it pretty well close to failure then took a rest for um, five or 10 seconds, and then came back and took another set to failure. And uh, using intensity techniques like this isn't really a staple of my training, I wouldn't say, but given that I'm injured and just am simply not able to load in the same way, uh, I think that using things like blood, fro blood flow restriction, um, drop, steps, drop sets, even iso holds, and just things to induce a sufficient level of fatigue in the muscle without having to load it heavily is kind of an important aspect of, of uh, training while injured. Um, and all of this stuff felt good, by the way. So I'm not really, if you see me squinting here, it's just because it, it does burn. Like when you really slow down the movement and slow down the tempo and really feel the muscle working, uh, you can get a really good burn without having to go very heavily. And that's something that this experience has definitely reminded me of. Uh, okay, so after the chest and shoulder stuff, it was on to triceps. And these might look weird because the weight is just super light. Like my, my triceps are one of my strongest muscles. I usually will use the entire stack for sets of 10 to 15. And here, I don't know, I don't even think I'm halfway down on the stack. And so it was just one of those exercises where it was so, so light that it actually felt kind of awkward. Like it was kind of difficult to control. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that. Um, but yeah, sometimes if the weight is too light, it just kind of throws off your counterbalance and it just feels a little bit awkward. And that was kind of how I felt doing these. Uh, but in subsequent sets, I did try to do a better job of really squeezing the muscle and contracting the tricep, especially at the bottom. 
After that, it was on to biceps. So again, I'm sticking with all machine stuff here just because it requires less core stability and uh, my erectors have to do less work in terms of stabilizing the spine when you're seated down and pinned into a machine. Uh, so just a little bit safer at this point for me. Um, and also, you know, it prevents cheating. So it prevents my back from doing work and actually getting the weight up uh, by locking your elbow elbows in place and so that's one of the things that I really like about the preacher curl is that you're really forced to activate your biceps and it really minimizes the amount of cheating and swinging that you can do when curling. I've talked about this exercise a ton uh, in other videos, the Bayesian cable curl. It's one of my favorites uh, but I finished off the um, actually no, I have one more exercise and it's the spider curl, uh, another one that I haven't done in a while but it's basically, um, it's also called a Scott curl, it's kind of just like a really steep preacher curl uh, with less, um, with a less shoulder flexion um, and so yeah, really good stretch on this movement and uh, it's also a good way to kind of target more so the long head than with your arm in a more of a, a flex position like in the the first exercise the first preacher curl that i did and that's it guys so i hope that you enjoy the rest of the vlog and i'll see you soon so just finished up my workout and i've got my post-workout protein i haven't tried this yet it's mint chocolate chip um it checks out it's not amino spiked or anything and it's really cheap so um those are two things you usually can't get, but yeah, I don't know, it's cheap in Canada. And protein. Super good, you wanna try? <laughs> well, that's disgusting. It doesn't taste like it toothpaste. Like water, it tastes like mint chocolate. Oh, man. It doesn't taste like mint chocolate. It tastes like, it's not mint chocolate, it's just mint, isn't it? No, it's mint chocolate. There's like little chocolate chips in there. Mint chocolate chip. Yeah. So it's like mint chocolate chip ice cream. Yeah, yeah it's like mint chocolate chip ice cream. Now, so we needed to get a couple groceries. Uh, so we just need to get like chicken. We have no protein at the house. Uh, so we came to the real Canadian superstore and I'll show you guys what we get. I'm just gonna pick one. Kiwis are super micronutrient dense and low calorie. Uh, so these are. A staple. Potatoes, good for a meal. My favorite is I love candy root beer. It's my favorite bread ever. It's not super low calorie, but it is high protein. Lately, I've been having cottage cheese as, either as a midday snack or before bed, and it is slower digesting, so the research isn't really clear on whether it's beneficial or not, but I always err on the side of if it maybe has a benefit, then there's certainly no harm in taking it. It's also pretty good for satiety, like if I have this midday, I won't be hungry for a nice while after. I'm just gonna get this oh, get, yeah, two for $8.98. So get two of them. We should get like, we should get like four. I think so. We have enough whole eggs? I think so. We basically have 18 whole eggs. We got extra lean ground beef. They should do us for a while. We probably had that like once or twice a week. Big thing of chicken. This will not last us because I have that I have chicken like twice a day. So guys, this is gonna be meal number, mm, meal, mm, meal number four. Uh, so this is how we cook green beans. Just like throw them in a bunch of water and put it in the microwave for, how long did you put it in for Robin? Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. And they just kind of cook and then you just drain it off. And then we've got some extra lean ground beef here made into like a sloppy joe mix. Low sodium Mrs. Dash sloppy joe seasoning mix. Okay, so that's the sloppy joe mix. I'm guessing this is probably about 150 maybe 200 grams of ground beef. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of double cheddar cheese on top. Uh, it's still wet. And that will be 
meal number four. I'm probably just gonna have some cottage cheese for my last meal, uh, but I just wanna give you guys some idea of what my macros are looking like. Uh, so 1,900 calories and I quick added some calories just for some estimations, um, but the protein total 65. Um, and yeah, these numbers are probably off, but 165 protein and 1900 calories. And I'm gonna have a, probably another serving of cottage cheese. So that'll give me about another 30 grams. So close to 200 protein and just over 2000 calories for today. I'm not hungry, so I'm not gonna force the food in basically. Um, and then tomorrow I'll probably aim to tighten up the macros a little bit further. Um, still probably do just calories and protein, um, but just track my sources a little bit more carefully. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this first vlog of the new series. I'm not sure if I'm gonna name it or anything, uh, but if you guys have any ideas for names, like Cutting for Cal, Cutting for Cali, I don't know, it sounds kind of cheesy. But if you guys have any ideas for names, you can let me know um, in the comments section below. And uh, don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Apologies about the last video that I uploaded. I know a bunch, bunch of people couldn't watch it because there was a copyrighted song on there. Um, so what I did was I uploaded a unlisted video of that um, whole video with a different song that is copyright free. Uh, so you guys can watch that by clicking the link right here. Um, and I've also got it linked in the description of this video and in the description of the video um, that was copyright claimed. Uh, so you guys can watch the, uh, the vlog now. All right, and I'll make sure I don't do that again.